Hey everyone, welcome to Whitcode, where in this video, we're going to learn how to create a Chrome extension with React and Webpack. So as a demonstration of what we're going to be building, it's this little icon here, which simply brings up a UI where this is all made with React, and you just click get a random user, and what it does is appends some information taken from JSON placeholder, which is just an API to get random JSON data, and it uses a content script to append it to whatever current website you're on. So it's nothing special, just how to create a Chrome extension with React. So this is all React code. And this will of course work on any other website. So say we go to my blog website and we use it here. And we click this, we'll get it appended. But this is what we're gonna be building. So to begin creating this project, let's first create a source folder to hold all our code. And at the top level of this source folder, let's add an index.html file. This index.html file will be our extension pop-up, which houses our React application. Now let's create three different folders inside the source folder. One to hold our background script called background, one to hold our content scripts called content, and one to hold our React application, let's call it React. Inside our background and content folders, let's add an index.js file. So inside index.js in the content or background, content, and then inside the React folder, let's create an index.jsx file. Now inside our React folder, let's also add a components, so a components directory. And inside this, let's create a app.jsx file. And now let's initialize this project as an ES6 NPM project with NPM in it ES6-y. What this does is create a package.json file with the type set to module so we can use import syntax. And then finally, let's create a manifest.json file at the top level of the project which of course provides the required information about the extension. Now let's focus on creating our React application. And of course, we're gonna be doing this with the module bundler Webpack. So to begin, let's first create a file called webpack.config.js, which is our Webpack configuration file. And to get this working, we need to install a few libraries. First is Webpack itself, and the next is Webpack CLI. And we'll install these as development dependencies. So they're installed under dev dependencies right here. So what Webpack will do is transpile our JSX code to JavaScript that the browser understands. However, for Webpack to do this, we need to install a loader for Webpack called Babel Loader, along with some other Babel dependencies. And these are Babel Preset ENV, Babel Preset React, and then the Babel Loader itself, all as development dependencies. But so a loader, so like the Babel loader, is a, simply a function that Webpack passes code through to perform some sort of transformation. The Babel loader is a Webpack loader that transpiles JavaScript code. Babel presets are used to configure the Babel transpiler, so these presets here. For example, the Babel React preset, or preset React, adds support for JSX code. We also want to install a couple plugins for Webpack called HTML Webpack plugin and copy Webpack plugin. So HTML Webpack plugin and copy Webpack plugin and install these as development dependencies. And now a Webpack plugin is simply something that interacts with the Webpack lifecycle. The HTML Webpack plugin creates an HTML file to place our bundled JavaScript code into. The copy Webpack plugin, this right here, is used to copy individual files or directory into the build folder. Now that we have the required libraries, let's configure Webpack with our configuration file. So I'm just gonna paste some already made code into webpack.config.js. And so what this configuration file will do is create three different output files. One called contentscript.js, one called background.js, and one called react.js. This is because we have this property for output with file name set to name.js, and the name comes from these here in the entry point. Webpack will also place each of these inside a folder called dist, which we have right here. And we also tell Webpack to copy over our manifest.json file right here into this dist folder. So we copy manifest.json, which is our Chrome extension information file into the distribution folder. We also tell Webpack to pass all JavaScript, or JS and JSX files through the Babel loader to convert it into code that the browser understands. And finally, we also set the mode to production. Now let's work on configuring our manifest.json file. So every Chrome extension requires a manifest.json file in its root directory. This file contains information such as the name of the extension, the location of the pop-up, permissions the extension has, and things like that. Let's fill in this file for our Chrome extension. 
So here we give the location of our pop-up, our background script, and content script. We give the content script the permission to run on every URL. We also give our extension a name, a description, and a version. And also note that all the locations passed in here, so for the content script, service worker, and pop-up, these files will be inside the distribution folder that Webpack creates, or this distribution here. So dist with the names of these, and that's where this stuff will be. So now that we have our project set up, let's build our React application. So first, let's install React and React DOM. So mpmi React and React DOM. Inside our index.jsx file, so inside React here, let me also close some of these down. Inside our index.js file, let's render our React application inside a div with the ID root, which will simply be this here. Now let's fill in the index.html file that contains this div element. So here's the div with the ID root where our React application will go. And below this, we can see our script.react.js, which contains our React code. The react.js file is what Webpack will create inside the final dist folder. And now let's create the app component inside app.jsx. I'm gonna paste some code into here. So it's app.jsx. And so what this component does is it contains a button. So a button right here that when clicked makes an API call to get some dummy user information. So it calls, this, calls get random user right here, which makes a fetch call to JSON placeholder, which just contains some dummy JSON data, which we then receive. After that user information is retrieved, the chrome.tabs API, so this right here, is used to retrieve the current tab. So we query for the current tab, and then we get the active tab like this. And then we use the chrome tabs API to send a message to the current active tab. And the message is the dummy user information retrieved from the API call. We then get a mess message back from the current tab and display it in the React application. So we have in some state right here, which is use state called script response, which we set here, and then we display inside our app component. And now let's create our content script. So let's go inside our index.js in the content folder, and let's make it alter the current tab by appending the message sent from the React application. So here we attach a message listener to our content script. When a message is received, so on message add a listener, when a message is received, we create an H1 tag, and then add some text with the message and then append it to the document body. Then we send back a message saying, looks good to me, bro, to the React application. So now that our application is essentially built, let's just create a simple NPM build script to run our application with Webpack. So this will go inside package.json under scripts, and it's simply just building Webpack, using Webpack to build our application with the config configuration file. So now, let me also open up this here, close all this down. When we run npm run build, we will bundle our application with Webpack, and we should see our distribution folder pulled right here. So now we have our background script, which is actually empty in here, our content script, index.html, our manifest.json, and the React file. And this dist folder here is essentially our Chrome extension. So now we just have to visit Chrome extensions. So if we go to Chrome dash dash extensions, and we choose load unpacked, go to where the code is, choose the dist folder, press select, and here it is right here. And now let's, to demonstrate, let's go to example.com. Let's pull up our extension, which is this here, and open it up. What we get is our React application here, saying add a user. And if we click this, we get the message back saying looks good to me. And then we are appending all the contact information here. And because we also have the permissions inside manifest JSON set to any website, we should be able to do this on any website. So let's go to my blog website and let's see what happens if we append it here. And I think it's at the very bottom. And what do you know, if we go to the very bottom, we get all this. But so this is my video on building a Chrome extension using React and Webpack. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I wanna thank you for liking and subscribing today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.